Right, my favourite mic check, mic check. We do like a bit of mic check over here. We've got a nice bit of bonnet going on as well. A bit of bonnet. There we go. Yeah, that's support. That's one of our customers. Yeah, that's, custom um, car. I love that bonnet. Um, He's Mr. Pixel Pie, Carl. Oh, he sells the bonnets, yeah? He so yeah, he'll make your man cave things and oh, he, yes. he does these things, yeah, yeah. They're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every man cave needs one of them, don't they? Well, I first need to get my man cave sorted out. Stick first. it in the lounge then, mate. <laughs> Hi there and welcome to another video from Max Rebs. Social media tends to focus on the highs in life where people don't always bring you some of the lower moments in life. And in this video, I'm going to bring and share with you a kind of a low point I had with my 981 GT4. And it did involve some damage to the car. But let me quickly tell you where we are. We're here at Centre Gravity, if you couldn't recognise the location. No, this is not my 718 GT4 RS behind me, but I thought it'd make a great backdrop for the video. My 981 GT4 is inside and Pete is working his magic on the car. And let's kind of talk about kind of why I'm here within a year of being here at last. And all I'll kind of basically say about the damage on the rear of my car is the car guys did a fantastic video. I'll put the link to that video in the description. Today, roads all across the UK and many other parts of the world are rapidly deteriorating, leading to car destroying potholes. In your country, you might call them chuck holes. In my country, we call them annoying. Hit something like this at speed at night or when it's filled with water like it is now and your wheels will be buckled, your tire shredded and you may also lose bodywork and expensive suspension components. My 981 GT4 had some kind of suspension damage on the rear. All the parts have been replaced. It's all done at Porsche Brooklands, my local OPC. And as part of the work to replace all those components, uh, they had to do a full wheel alignment. Now, these are the only guys I like to dial in my wheel alignment, center gravity. I've given them new requirements for this year for 2024. I want my car to be more of a grand tourer. So we are softening the anti-roll bars front and rear. We are raising the car by about four to five mil front and rear too. And that's going to get me a little bit extra damper travel. I'm doing trips to Scotland. It's going to help me get onto ferries a bit easier. And hey, if I don't like the kind of the ride height being raised, I can always lower it next year. But I want to get onto ferries. I want to do a lot more things with the car this year. Put on loads of miles. I'm 31,000 miles so far, probably in the top four highest mileage GT4s, 981s in the country, but do I care? No, and I'm looking to put plenty more miles on the car because it's my car and it's supposed to make me happy in the way that I want. So that's it, enjoying life and cars to the max and let's put a great video together for you on this channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So Pete's done his drive on the car. He's been on the routes that he knows and knows how a car should handle. The wheel line was done here at Centre Gravity a year ago. And what's quite interesting when Pete took the car out this morning, he was a bit like, it's not as I remember it. So um, Pete's going to share with you his thoughts on the drive this morning, which is very interesting. We've just got it up on a Hunter Hawkeye and we've read out the previous readings and we're going to compare that back to the readings that were set up here a year ago. So, hey Pete, how are you doing? Good morning. Hopefully some of you might have seen Max's videos previously and you might remember the test drive that we did in the, uh, in the previous Cayman and maybe even this Cayman before. Um, so you might be familiar with our test procedure uh, and the evaluation route that we do. A couple of things came out of the wash this morning with, uh, with the GT4. Um, just on our little industrial estate around here with the steering wheel straight, the car just had a slight tendency to want to, to drive towards the right hand side of the road. And as soon as we crossed the white line, it would then really quite dive for the right hand side of the road. It was really quite tram lining and quite nervous. Um, at higher speeds, certainly on dual carriageways, if you've got any amount of steering lock on, the car felt very unstable, especially from the back of the car. Um, no confidence in the rear. And we were doing 61 mile an hour at this point, you know, in a car that's more than capable of doing at least double that speed on those kind of roads. 
Um, with the steering wheel straight on those roads, again, the car had a tendency to want to go to the right. And if we held the car straight and we used all of the power, so drop it a few gears and, and give it some acceleration, the car would pull um, quite heavily to the right hand side. So as soon as you used any kind of throttle, you were always having to steer the car back left to prevent it wanting to go to the right. Um, we weren't going to continue the test route, we were going to come back to base knowing that um, we'd seen the car before, but given what we found on those first couple of tests, we decided to extend the test onto our bumpy B road, which is one of Max's favourites of our uh, evaluation route, just to see how the car behaved uh, when the road got a little bit choppy. <clears throat> and here we found the car was very unstable, especially from the back. As soon as the rear wheels hit the white line or a bump on the inside of the road, the rear of the car would lose any kind of confidence and it would start to move around. Shiny new camber arms and shiny new dampers. Um, the most important thing on the car is the toe adjustment and, uh, and it seized. Pete, that was Pete's evaluation based on his actual experiences on the road. Now we're going to look at the Hunter Hawkeye readouts, which are basically the numerical readouts of that kind of machine that you can see up there. And we're going to compare the existing settings on my car now, before they've done any work, versus the settings when I left Centre Gravity a year ago. So, Pete, um, now we're getting down into the numbers and stuff. This is your speciality. Absolutely. Can we kind of like go through... You just told us how it felt to you based yep. on your handling of the car, how it feels to you. Does that line up with the numbers that you've just read off my car now? Like, Absolutely, it does, yeah, okay. yeah. So first thing to note before we get to look at this um, is that the car is now ballasted with a full tank of fuel um, and we've set all the tyre pressures. The car is now on a level ramp that's calibrated level at this height before we put the equipment on. Um, and if we, if we come to the screen, if we turn that one over for a moment, that was your last time. This is as we've just driven. So this is the car that we have just driven before any changes. All we've done is put fuel ballast in the front and set the tyre pressures. No spanners have come out. I've paused this video now just to quickly call out, look for the symmetry or lack thereof. A perfectly balanced car must have symmetry. So look at the numbers on the left and the right hand side of that picture and just take note that they are different. Um, now obviously parts have been changed on the rear of the car, um, hence your reason for being here today because Porsche have put the geometry back um, to what they believe to be factory settings. And if we're honest, it's not bad. It's not bad. If we compare these before settings to your before settings last time that were really quite all over the show, this isn't a bad place to start. However, we want this to agree with what we've just driven on our little evaluation route. Um, and the main reason for most of those issues is down to this discrepancy in the rear toes and the amount of rear toe and the discrepancy in the front cambers. So the car was um, right biased everywhere. So on the straight road, it went right. On the cambered road, it went right. And if we accelerated, it went right. And that is a factor of these rear toe settings here. Nine minutes of toe in on the rear right wheel and two on the rear left wheel, and effectively you've got constant rear wheel steer. Yeah, one thing that you told me last time was that symmetry is really important. So Absolutely. the fact that the toes are that different, I mean, does that, that, does that, doesn't look right to me, I mean. It's the fact that they're different and the fact that they're too low for the car. Okay. So, I mean, this would be great for tire wear if all you were doing was straight line stuff, but it doesn't give you any stability, it doesn't give you any traction, and this is the reason why the back of the car feels so nervous at relatively low speed. You know, we didn't get above 61 mile an hour on the dual carriageway, and this was already becoming an issue. Yeah. If you're going to start using the car for, for GT work, you know, grand touring work, and you're going to go off into Europe where you can do higher speeds than 61 miles an hour, um, this would make the back of the car really quite lively. And it's the back of the car being lively which then causes the front to be nervous. Cool. Because you're constantly having to correct what the rear of the car is yeah. trying to do. Oh, so I, I wasn't just imagining it. I and mean, this is why I love coming down to you guys because you guys know what you're doing. So, so on an axle by axle basis, can we compare the rear versus what it was like when I left you last time? Absolutely. Just talk us through so, that. So, so these are the, your settings from last time, if we overlay those. Yeah. So you can see um, from the report that the, the camber values, front and rear, are pretty close, you know, 127s versus 132s, you know, I'd, I'd take that, you've done, um, we've done nearly 3,000 miles, front cambers are, you know, pretty good as well, nothing really much amiss there, front casters are pretty good, 
you know, 10 degrees is where we left you and, and 10 degrees is where you are. Um, even the front toes are, are pretty close, but it's these rear toes and, and more specifically the total rear toe, which is causing us most of the grief. So last time we set the rear of the car um, with stable rear toes for traction and cross country stability. Um, unfortunately, our roads aren't renowned for being that perfect anymore. This is the absolute bastard. Here's a good example, hiding on the brow of a humpback bridge. So you have no chance of avoiding it. And this is a pothole that's large enough to do some serious damage, but it's entirely hidden from view until you hit it. Hence, oh, you absolute bastard. So we want absolute traction and stability in the rear of the car. And if we give the rear of the car a nice stable axle, which doesn't want to move around too much, it will give the front less work to do. And that way we can ask the front to do a little bit less work because all we want the front to do is steer. So on a rear wheel drive car, we would always put an emphasis on, on the rear toes being slightly higher to give us stability. If it was a front wheel drive car, you might want the opposite. And if it was a four wheel drive car, then you might want to divvy out the two, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the biggest issue really is the one is the asymmetry in the toes, um, but more so for me is how low they are. You know, a total of 24 last time versus a total of 11 now. That's what's causing the back of the car to be really quite unstable. Gotcha. There you go. Well, it's great that you spotted that. And now we've just got to dial it in uh, as it was when I left you last time. Absolutely. And then obviously at this stage, what's important is that what we've measured here agrees 100% with what we found on the evaluation drive. Yeah. And that's why we always drive it first. We want to find out with our hands and our butt what the car feels like. And then we only really use the machine just to put numbers to it. Cool, sounds good to me. Cheers, Pete. Thanks for watching. That's the end of part one. Join us in part two where Pete dials in the geometry that I want on the car. We'll also talk about how the car was raised by four mil. And then at the end, Pete will talk about all the work he's done on the car with our final evaluation. Enjoy knife and cars to the max. See ya.